Hey Thank everyone, you. you are live with the professor and the bats on Professor and Friends. Stick around. I'm good, sir. How are you today? Man, let me tell you, you are looking good with all your updated equipment. You're looking professional now. Right. I love, I love it. it. I dig it. Microphone. Got the more patch, more expo on the on the microphone. Showing some love for Chris. Heck yeah. yeah heck yeah. We're going to show a little love to him tonight. Uh, speaking of love, I got to show you something I got this week from our friends at Long Creek Overland. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Professor and Friends swag from Long Creek Overland. I love it. Land. Don't bro me. Don't bro me. Unless you know me. That's right. <laughs> I love it. I, I love, love it. it, too. I'm excited about that. I appreciate John sending those out. Hope John had a wonderful birthday. We had him on last week on his birthday. Yeah. Uh, how's your week Heck been, yeah. bro? Oh, it's been all right. It's been all right. No wrecks or nothing like that. No wrecks. Just, no, no wrecks. Just I like that. I like plugging that. away, getting getting some projects done, and work's been busy. My regular day job's been kind of busy, so well, but it's good. That's, it's good. That's good. Well, let me tell you. Have you hit any? Uh, have you hit any purchase buttons this week? I have. You bought a little gear this week. I have. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, uh, got the diesel heater coming tomorrow, and uh, today I finally pulled the trigger on a power supply. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was wrestling back and forth with getting a a uh, one of the auxiliary, uh, uh, you know, the auxiliary battery set up with the uh, Red Arc. Yeah. Uh, electronics, you know, but uh, I don't know. I just I found the uh, the what was it? The EcoFlow. They were running a yeah. special today, so I uh, went ahead and went ahead and ordered one of those. And I haven't told Arla yet, but I ordered a GoPro today too. Well, Arla's on here, so uh oh, she knows. uh oh, now she knows it's out. <laughs> uh oh, uh, it's pretty bad when your wife watches the show and uh, you can't have any secrets among the men. But you that's know, right. That's the way it goes. We appreciate you listening. I have to lock the door so she don't come busting in here in a minute. <laughs> Arla, we're going to need you to work a little overtime this week. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I hit the button a little, a few too many times this week myself. Um, uh oh. I bought a little brother to our Jackery 1000. Uh, we got the Jackery 300 now. Uh, oh, nice. Wanted something a little smaller, a little more portable. That 1000 is just a mega machine, and it's it's not easy to put up and take down from the from the, from the from the rooftop tent and yeah and if you want to plug phones in or a light or something like that you know it's just kind of a kind of a pain and something else i bought to plug into that thing is i uh, got my wife a 12 volt heated blanket nice i think she's gonna like that yeah in fact that's she's... what we're talking about tonight so i had to actually purchase something about staying warm so that's right yeah it's been uh it's been a week um we've got a trip planned uh, next weekend, we're going to be Friday, uh, Saturday till Tuesday, I believe. We're going to East Arkansas and camp with some friends on a Thanksgiving camp. That'd be and, fun. I'll, I may, I may try to swing over there. I, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I've got a, I'm going to be over at John's place uh, on Saturday. Spend the night there. 
Saturday yeah. night, and uh, Arla's got to be back Monday, so I, I don't know how we'll work that out, but uh, we might drive separately, and then I could just kind of there you go over to the just gym. stick around, stick around. Yes. Well, I told I told my wife um, that uh, she could take her laptop if she wanted, but we're not coming back till Tuesday. If she wanted to work, she could take her MiFi and her laptop and and have fun sitting around camp and doing it. But I'm not bringing her. Yes, laptop sir. Home. <laughs> just that's ain't right. doing it. That's just ain't right. doing it. Well, Chad, we must have some big heads on your screen. You got a big screen for our show, so I appreciate you wanting to make us bigger. Hey, Chad. Um, but we are talking about tonight. We actually are coming up with topics. This is, um, you know, we call this a radio show. This really isn't on the radio, but it's kind of a live taping of a of a podcast or whatever. But we, right. we want to talk about different topics that may help you out or benefit you in some way and uh, talk about things that have we have been through and um, see if you can help us out. So this is going to be another listener participation show. And uh, here in just a minute, I'm going to post an invite into the comments. So if you're out there listening, if you want to come on the show and you have something to contribute, um, we would love to have you on here. Uh, last week, we did that for the very first time ever, and uh, it worked out good. I think we good. had some good people on It there. was good. That was fun. I loved it. It was fun. And plus, nobody wants to listen to us talk the whole time. No, not the I whole mean, time. No. You know, if somebody else comes on here, we may get more listeners. Aaron, appreciate you being on here. Hey, Aaron. Greetings. Salutations. I love that. I listen to my dad preach all my life, and he, he always does the greetings and salutations. But we're going to talk about... Staying warm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a season. It is the season. It has become my favorite season of the year. I love, love the fall. Uh, the heat, the sweltering Arkansas heat has finally left the building. Yeah. And if it never came back, it would be too early. That's right. That's right. Um, I, I love the fall, love the cooler weather. I can stay warm. I can figure out ways to stay warm. In fact, we're going to talk about a million ways to stay warm. If we talk about staying cool, I can only think of a couple of ways. A fan and an air conditioner. <laughs> yeah, or getting in water. Or, or getting in water. You camp on the river or something, you get in the water, that helps. But that only goes so far. Yeah, you're right. It only goes so far. But, uh, you know, I just, I, just wanna, I just want everybody to know that if, if you see – Tony's new equipment that he's got. He's got the headphones. You know, he's not using his cell phone anymore. Got the boom mic. I mean, he is just decked out because Tony is now the official co-host of Real Fashion and Friends. And I just want to, I just want to thank you for, thank you for taking that on. And yeah, man. It's excited to have you. I here. love it. Thanks for having me. I love it. I love yeah, I, it. I love I, getting I, on here, talking to people and talking about our experiences. It's uh, it's a good time. It is a good time. It is so, a good time. Arla, Arla's excited. She's not even mad that you spent yeah, all the money. Nah, so, yeah, uh, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like, you know, there was a time in my life, I remember the first time that I ever sat away from my dad in church. And uh, when I did, my best friend taught me how to make a paper airplane. And oh as boy. soon as the amen was said at the end, I flew that sucker around that church. And my dad told me, he said, go to my office. Oh, boy. You know, you're going to get it when you get home. That's what he told me. And so, I love, Arla, I love your, I love what you, I love your attitude there. Can't wait, take, take can't take it with us. So, might yeah. as well enjoy life while you got it. But anyway, when you walk out that door, you may get it. I'm just telling you, you may get that, it, Tony. That's right. She just don't yeah. want to kill you on the air because it's that's right. witnesses. <laughs> that's right. No, I mean, part of it, too, is, you know, with the addition of the Gladiator, we're, we've got kind of sort of two setups now that we've got to equip. Yeah. And we're looking at taking two rigs here at the end of December. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, let me ask you on, on a completely different topic. Um, the trip that you're going on um, in December... Uh, have you done any more research on your uh, part of Texas that you're going to be in? Nope. Nope. I mean, I've gone and kind of identified, you know, some places maybe just outside the park. 
but we we still have a few nights uh, after the first night and yeah. and uh before we get to texas it, we have to uh kind of narrow down where we're going to stay but uh so we'll we'll see how that goes we, yeah. we may be camping on private property just outside the park there okay all right. So private property meaning uh, Walmart or Safeway. Uh, or no, we're not, not, no, we're not. No, no, <laughs> no, no, we're not looking at doing anything like that. Okay. Uh, well. It's there's some private campgrounds. So the park kind of it kind of dips down right. in the middle, and where you come across from New Mexico, if you come through the park, there's there's a an area there that's probably got maybe five uh, private privately owned places that we could camp right. so it pay it we'd be paying to camp um like i overlander or stuff like that so okay well you know we'll you could always goes. uh and, and for those who don't know we're talking about big b and national park in texas mm -hmm. um i've been i've done a ton of research on that because i tried to get a spot down there around thanksgiving for us to go and everything was completely booked i guess nobody okay. in texas has anywhere to go mm -hmm. um there is no public land in texas it's all either national park, uh, state park, or private land. And so you go down there, I'm not driving 10, 12 hours and not have a place to stay. But yeah. since y'all are going to go ahead and go, you can always stand in line to get those spots on the river because those are first come, first serve. And they have about 30 spots on the river that may be available to you. So that's always an option. That's an option. If we have uh, plan B to go to as well, that that's certainly something that we'll have to consider. Yeah. That's true. Well, it should be really nice down there in December. Um, I'm really, um, I'm, I'm jealous because yeah. I really wanted to go down there. You can't go down there during the summer. Um, it's just, you think, you think Arkansas You think it's hot. bad here down there would be terrible. Uh, it's, it's Arizona hot with humidity down there. So it's, it's just unbearable, but you go down there between November and the first of March and, and you're doing what, really well. So, we planned ours during spring break. We're going to leave March 15th, and I've got two spots down there in the national park uh, that we're going to stay. So I'm really excited about really excited about that. Ho hopefully it won't be hot by then. Right. Yeah, that would be fun. It'll be comfortable. So yep. uh, we've got some spots that are right, right on the main roads. So we didn't want any backcountry camping. Uh-oh, more uh -oh. fell. More, more fell. Patch fell. <laughs> I'm going to have to... I won't have to revisit my uh, attachment there after the oh, show that's all right. before that's next all right. week. But we're going to go down there in March. I think it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm excited about that. And, and hopefully um, when y'all go down there, it won't be too cold. But since we've done all this research on staying warm, uh, you'll know how to stay warm. Yeah. Uh, but is is uh, Arla going with you on that trip? So we were just talking about that today. She, she scheduled the last four days of vacation that she has. Um, and I, I kind of think that she is going, and at this point, I think the question is, are we going to take two vehicles? Yeah. Um, you know, or, or one. Are I you doing that, that for uh, practice and experience, or are you yeah. doing that because somebody has to come back earlier? No, I think it's I think it's uh, to get more get uh, you know her more accustomed to driving and off roading. Yeah. You know, usually it's me, so yeah. Uh, we got two built rigs, so we might as well. Might as well put them both to use. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, I think it's going to be an epic trip. I do too. Uh, I'm not real sure if I'm going to be able to do it yet, but uh, uh, I am looking to see if I got, if I can, uh, if I can swing this. It, it's at a perfect time yeah. for us. Uh, I don't know if my wife's going to take off or tell me to just go on and it, she'll have some, uh, some time to spend by herself. Uh, she yeah. likes that. <laughs> so if you went, would you take Brutus? Or, I mean, uh, uh, bruiser, bruiser. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Probably bruiser. Probably not. Probably yeah. not. Having him by myself is a lot to deal with. Yeah. Um, and he, he really can't stand to be away from his mama. So, yeah. Uh, uh, it'd probably be something that I just leave him here for. Yeah. That's, that's something else we've got to figure out with our two. Yeah. Two dogs. Anyway, that's true. Well, uh, thank you, Chad. Get back on topic. Uh, winter is coming. Um, it's, it's coming upon us pretty hard and are you prepared, uh, for staying warm? Now, I, I really like this time of year because you get to experience things that you don't get to experience when it's hot. Um, campfires, um, you know, it's, it's, you, you can just feel it in the air 
yeah. when um, when it's time to have a campfire. And I yeah. love having a campfire. And I don't know how all those people out west that constantly have burn bans do it. Because, you know, every time I've been to Colorado and New Mexico, it's no wood, no charcoal. Yeah. And I, I think, man, y'all are really missing out. But, you know, there's stupid people out there that set things on fire so they can't yeah. have it. That's right. And we, when we went to Colorado last year, we met some new friends. We camped just outside of Silverton and they were, they had one of those, uh, propane fire pits. Yeah. And you, you can burn those when there's a burn yeah, ban. You can. And it was cold that night and they invited us over to get warm by their propane fireplace. And it was, it was a good time. Those are, those are awesome. In fact, yeah. I've got one on order. Should be here on Tuesday of next week. Oh, uh, I thought I could modify the one that I've got, but, I uh, took it apart and uh, it's just not going to work. So I just ended up buying the Camp Chef uh, folding one that's real small. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Nice. Um, but uh, I love campfires. I love cooking when it's cooler. When when it's hot, I don't want to cook. I want to make a sandwich. They don't seem uh, like camping without a campfire. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So So there are things that are coming into play that you have to think about, um, especially... When you're planning these trips, are, they, are you going to need firewood? Uh, are you going to cut it when you get there? Um, you know, so you have to think about that. Are your covers, your sleeping bag? Um, uh, we have a thin sleeping bag. We have thick sleeping bags. Uh, the thick wool ones, you don't want them in the summer. No. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll be sleeping in a pool of sweat, and I'm yep. not doing that. Yeah. So you ha you have to prepare. Um, so. We, we want to think about things that, the, how we stay warm, not just in our tents, but when we're outside, because when it's 30 degrees outside, you're still cold. So how do you stay warm? So I want to talk about this. You have to prepare differently. You sleep differently. You cook differently. You dress differently. So I thought this might be a good topic for us to talk about staying warm. So we're going to talk about this right after we hear a word from our sponsors. Take a break. Hi, I'm Barry Henderson with Turtle Back Trailers. I'm Adam with Oki Overland. This is John with Long Creek Overland. I'm Drew with Rock Squash Design. I'm Casey with US Action Track. Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Misty from the day we wake. I'm here with Dustin Ogg from Oakley Overland. Hi, I'm Jeremiah from Overland Pioneer. Hi, we're Jessica and Jorge from Liverpool Wonder. Chris from More Expo. And Misty from Lady Overlander Radio. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. You're watching. Are watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. Professor and Friends. Professor and Friends. Professor and Friends. Joey the Professor and Friends. Professor and Friends. Professor and Friends. The Professor and Friends. Professor and Friends. Professor and Friends. Professor and Friends. Sponsored by Artemis Overland Hardware in Springfield, Missouri. More Expo, April 8th through the 10th, 2022. Big Iron Overland Rally in June of 2022 as well. U.S. Action Tracks, Blue Cell Coffee Roasters, Linson Solar, and our good friends, and new edition, Howling Moon, only available at Artemis Overland Hardware. Thank you for joining our show. Let's get this party started. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I love it's it. good stuff. <laughs> oh man so i want to tell everybody again started it last week we are a listener driven show if you're on here and you want to come on the show i have just posted the link on the overland philosopher facebook page go to that page it'll have the link click on the link and we will add you to the show and make sure when you come on the show you bring your a-game because that's all we have here that's now right. i want to i want to make it very clear there are no pros here only bros. So we don't have ever all the answers, but we would like to get some of your input. We'd like for you to come on and tell us how you stay warm when we talk about this stuff, because everybody's got different gear. Everybody's got different ways that they uh, stay warm. And, and uh, you know, what I have and what, what uh, Tony has are completely different things. So I think we'll both have a lot to add and a lot of input. So mm -hmm. the first, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, maybe there's a certain birthday boy that could uh, come on and tell us about uh, some of the battery-powered clothes that he has. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, 
Who are you talking yeah, about that there? Was, that was fascinating. I, I didn't get a chance to talk to him all that much, but Matt? Matt's Matt has got a, yeah, a battery-powered clock. Yeah, he's got a, I don't know if it was a jacket or a vest underneath his jacket, but he had it charged up, and it's got a, heat, a heater in it. And, wow. Or it's some sort of, yeah. Well, no, clothing is, clothing is probably the first place we need to start. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, when I, I ride motorcycles, and we have heated suits, but you have to plug them into the battery to make them work. Right. Now, I know that they have ones that have battery packs, but I've never experienced any of that. Um, I always thought I'd fall in a pool of water and get electrocuted. I didn't, <laughs> right. always kind of scared me a little bit. But, um, yeah, long johns, uh, I'm all for long johns. Um, and I like hoodies like fat kids love cake. So That's right. Uh, I love the I love the warm clothing. So we had to get we had to get John to add a professor hoodie to the website. So he told we me yesterday it's on there. I yeah. just got to get on there and get one. So yeah. uh, uh, the Dope Bro Me, if you don't know me, uh, hoodie is available on Long Creek Overland. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited about that. So, um, but, but one thing you have to, uh, you think about when, when, you're, uh, when you're packing is winter clothes take up a lot more space than summer clothes. Yeah, they I do. Mean, we're not packing bikinis here. We're packing, mm -hmm. you know, heavy coats, long johns, thick socks. It takes up a lot more room. My boots take up a lot more room than my Jesus sandals. And, yeah. you know, you have to think about that because, like like we always say, we don't have large vehicles. And we got to utilize the space that we have. Um, and, you know, especially when you have the ladies going that That's always right. take three times more than what they need. Um, you're multiplying all this clothing and bags and and my wife gets in and she'll just pack bags around her feet and her, and she'll hold one and i'm like what are you doing <laughs> why, why do we have all this stuff i don't get it well i, I just I, I i might need this i might need this well you know then most likely you're not but yeah. whatever whatever makes yeah. you happy whatever makes you happy uh, jared cook says love the podcast set up tony thanks brother <laughs> I love, love it too. Jared. Um, what about how do you keep clean? How do you keep clean in the winter, Tony? So, <laughs> uh, or is that a big deal to you? For well, I mean, I mean, on a regular weekend, I'm not probably going to break out to shower when it's cold. If it's especially if it's just me. Yeah. I mean. So it, it just it just depends on how cold and who all is with me, how long I'm staying. I tell you, um, one of the things that I really love that I truly utilize in cold weather camping is shower pouches. Yeah. Shower pouches are an overgrown uh, baby wipe on steroids, and they come in amazing scents. Um, and they are super cool. And what a lot of people don't realize about shower pouches is actually you can boil the pouch and make it hot. So you can take water, boil it, put the pouch in there for 30 seconds to a minute, and you make the you make the wipey hot, and you have a hot shower. And You're so blowing my of, mind right now. A lot I of people never don't even that. thought about that. They make mm -hmm. that package where you can boil the shower pouch. That is a huge advantage to other plastic wraps or anything like that because you can't do that with just a regular baby wipe. See, I'm um, going to have to circle back around and go look at that again, I think. <laughs> so, uh, that is that is definitely one way to keep clean because you can use those in your tent that's yeah. already warm or yeah. your annex that's already warm. And so that um, that is a that's kind of a huge deal. So, that that that's what I like to do. Uh, one thing that a, a buddy of mine does um, for he has a twenty three zero Peregrine shower enclosure, and he has a um, diesel heater. And what he does is he takes that diesel heater tube and runs it underneath the shower tent curtain, and it and no lie, it heats that whole area. Wow! And so. Uh, that's one advantage of a diesel heater that a lot of people haven't thought of. You actually can heat your shower while you're taking a shower. See, and that, and 
you, you have to think about when or where your placement like we have the uh overland vehicle system shower tent and now depending on where i'm going to put my diesel heater where i'm going to set my shower tent up on which side of the rig yep i could just pull that tube out of my tent put it right in the shower tent that's exactly right there you go that's exactly okay right. hmm. and um you know, one thing about those shower tents I really haven't understood is why don't they make one with a roof? I don't get it. Well, mine has a roof. Really? Yeah. It's yeah. it's a big one. The the OVS shower tent. Overland vehicle system shower tent has a roof. Yes, sir. It's a well. See, and that that would make big. that much more sense because if you've got It'll a roof, it would it would keep in the heat. Yeah. With mine, it doesn't have a uh, it doesn't have a roof on it, so the heat would just go out. But I mean, it's constantly blowing heat. But if you've got a roof on it, it would make it like a sauna in there. It, it would, yeah. And Man. yeah, I can feel it now. Right, I can feel it now. I bet that yeah. would feel so good. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Arla says our shower tent is freestanding. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's so it's. Why. That's why, yeah, it's it's. That's right. uh, I remember it now because that's where you store your gear when you go on runs. If anybody's out there and sees his camp, that's where all his gear is. If he's out on a run, if you see a lone OVS, <laughs> the gray OVS shower tent, don't unzip it because it's probably full of all kinds of camping gear. He'll have at least ten thousand dollars worth of camping gear. <laughs> <in there>, <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's that's awesome. But yeah, my the one that hooks to my vehicle. The one that mounts on the vehicle, I've yet to see one that has a um, has a roof on it. Yeah. Now, I told my wife uh, when we went to Rendezvous to bring a giant umbrella, and we could just set it on top of it because it was raining the whole time. Um, and so, I mean, that would work. And an umbrella really doesn't take up that much space. So, uh, yeah, that's, and it's probably big work. enough to encompass all four walls. It would walls, cover the whole thing. Yeah. It really Heck would. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. So, that's, that's one thing. Now, so uh clothing definitely got to have warmer clothing but you've got to make sure that you allow for the amount of space that you're going to use when you pack all this stuff um the keeping clean always remember uh it's uh cleanliness is next to godliness Godly, That's what yeah. my parents always told me while i was growing up my grandma so used to say I, that yeah. you know you may be one of these people out there that that does not take any extra clothes you wear the same clothes all week uh you can't you have no sense of smell uh, but just remember, everybody else does. Yeah. Um, so it's not deer camp. Um, you know, <laughs> That's uh, right. Getting ready to go to deer camp uh, tomorrow. But I promise you, I'll shower while I'm down there because I don't want to get down there where the deer run off when they smell. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's it's something to think about. Now, right. what about food and cooking? Is it much, is it, is it much more fun to cook? Hey, Travis. Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, you're, you're already hot in the summertime and the last thing you want to do is cook on a hot fire. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I, the cooler weather just brings about, uh, you know, warmer recipes like cooking chili and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Um, I love Dutch oven cooking. Uh, I love setting up, uh, the old uh, cowboy charcoal and lighten it up, uh, put it in the Madcon grill or, or something like that. And, and, um, you know, making some chili, making some stew, making some biscuits or, or whatever. Love cooking like that. But let me tell you, if it's hot outside, I'm not doing it. Sandwich. Um, sandwich. Exactly. Sandwich. Uh, uncrustables are the best thing ever. Really? <laughs> uncrustables. Uncrustables right. are pre-made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They yeah. are the ball. So uh, it, it works out well, but but I love to cook. I love cooking on my scottle. I love cooking on my grill. Um, you know, a lot of people take black stones. I don't have one because they're so big and heavy. Um, but I love taking the scottle. I love my old Coleman, uh, you know, cook stove with my griddle top on there. And I, I love cooking. And yeah. it just makes it much that much more enjoyable to me when I can get out there and cook. So it's, um, it's just that much better. Uh, but before anything else, when it's cold, we got to have coffee. Yeah. How do you make your coffee? So when I make coffee, uh, I use one of the old school, it's not an 
old version. It's a new percolator. percolator? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, when I was growing up, that's what my my parents, my grandpa, anytime they were cooking or making coffee, it was in a percolator. So that's yeah. just kind of, you know, I don't know. That's one of those things. There's a lot of, you know, the coffee press and all that kind of stuff out there. But one of the things that I enjoy about all this is it kind of helps keep me connected to the memories I had growing up, you know, and uh, the percolator is one of them. So when it's when it's not hot, like in the summertime, that's that's how I do it. Yeah, uh, Travis is French press for us. I, yeah. I love I love a good French press. Um, <clears throat> I actually researched and um, and watched a lot of videos on how to accurately and and uh, correctly do a French press. And once I figured it out, it was really really good. Yeah, uh, my go to is uh, nineteen sixty six wherever uh, a wherever aluminum percolator. I love it. Um, it makes amazing coffee and, um, I love watching it perk. I think it's yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the kid in me. I, uh, yeah, that's right. I just have these flashbacks of when I was a kid watching it perk right on the fire. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to me. I, lo I love doing it. My, uh, neither one of my parents ever drank coffee. Um, I won't hold that against them. Um, but you know, they're still normal people, barely. <laughs> Um, but my grandparents always, uh, they were Nescafe people. So they did the instant. So they would, my granny, oh. and I've still got it. I've still got the, uh, the aluminum pot that she would heat, uh, hot water up in and, and she would hand him, uh, when I spent the night with him, she would hand him a, uh, just a little thing of hot water and he would take two scoops of that Nescafe and put down in there and just stir it up and, and drink it. And, um, you know, Papaw, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot better coffee out there. Um, yeah. I just, uh, I hate that you missed out on that, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. That, yeah. I, uh, I, I just, won't hold it against you. Won't hold it against you. But, that's uh, like my, my grandma used to drink the, the powdered milk she never bought you know, milk in a gallon, you know, like yeah. the instant powdered milk. That's yeah. awful. Awful oh, stuff. Horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Uh, anyway. Travis said my parents didn't, but my nanny uh, did, and I've drank it since I was little. You know, I always wanted to like it, but I never could make myself like it. But about, about five years ago, um, while at work, I got so stinking cold. I mean, so cold. And they had a pot of coffee there. I made me a big cup of it. I drank it black and I've never went back. And that's yeah. a true saying. I don't put anything in mine. There's no creamer. There's no sugar. There's no nothing. I want to know what the coffee tastes like. And I'm hardcore. I'm hardcore. So, I'm not hardcore. Well, that's okay. Not everybody can be hardcore. <laughs> so what, what do you put in your coffee? Oh, just uh, the, uh, what's it? The international just uh some sweetener french vanilla or something oh you're that just, fruit just fruit yeah i'm a, i hate to say it but i am yeah <laughs> yeah i know it's not popular but whatever well hey you know my wife my wife likes the uh french mocha butterfinger whatever i don't know what it is all i know is i make it for her and she loves it so that's what's um, important as long as it keeps her from killing me uh i'll make it for her and that'll be great and it keeps her camping. Keeps her camping. Keeps her camping. But I, I can tell you this. Her coffee creamer is our number one forgotten thing on all camping trips. We forget that more than anything. Um, we'll get out there and she'll say, did you bring my creamer? And I'm like, you know, I don't drink creamer. So it's one of those things that's hard to remember. Why should it be my responsibility to remember it? Uh, that's See, when taking the two rigs comes in handy you pack your stuff and i'll pack mine uh, see uh arla doesn't drink coffee at all and she always remembers my creamer wow. she i've just i'm lucky that way what a like, perfect like woman. yeah yeah she's yeah. awesome that's incredible yeah we'll just anyway. have a moment of silence for for all these amazing <laughs> women out there one <laughs> oh my goodness well anyway there we have food and cooking now i i i hate to leave cooking so quick but i you know, that's that's one of the things 
that truly affects me when when we go is because if the temperature's going to be hot, I'm not going to prepare a lot of things. And I made that mistake one time this summer. Um, I've, I've, I wasn't thinking right. You know, I was in a hurry. Uh, I threw a bunch of food that I had. I had some frozen sausage that I wanted to eat and some rice and and uh, some different things. And I get out there and I get everything set up and I'm by myself. And it's hot. Yeah. I mean, just hot. And I'm thinking, now all this food that I've got, I've got to cook. I didn't bring any food that I could just, I didn't bring no chips, no crackers, no sandwich stuff, no nothing. And, you know, I thought, wow, that's a major mistake. So uh, I actually uh, ran up the road, got me a sandwich made, came back. I mean, that's how much I didn't <laughs> want to cook. Uh, so it's, uh, it's something that you got to think about when you're preparing the temperatures, yeah. if it's cooler, you know, cooking, cooking's a little more, um, uh, pleasant. Uh, and, and I'm not, I'm not more of a sandwich guy when it's cold, uh, unless it's a grilled cheese and soup. Uh, but it's, um, uh, Travis, I love that. Right. I refuse to camp in the heat, so I'd never have that issue. I'm getting now, there, man. Um, I'm getting there. Uh, except now that they've come out with this zero breeze, um, that that may change everything for me i'm never going to live that one down you remember you remember last week when mason was talking about how he got on their special mailing list and he got it for 50 percent off yeah i'm never going to live it down <laughs> yeah um i can see that i can see that but uh Kara, she is talking about Matt's battery-powered clothes. That's what she's talking about. Yeah, uh, he had he Matt had to some sort of talk about his battery-powered clothes because that's how he stays warm. And um, so anyway, that's what, she, what she's talking about. She says, "Get an air conditioner. It's amazing." Yes, she says, "Get an air conditioner. It's amazing." Uh, Matt really sold me on the air conditioner when he did the video on it this summer. It was a hundred degrees outside, and he said he had to turn it off because he was freezing. Um. So we're, we're, that's definitely on the list. We're getting that. No questions asked if I have to sell a kidney. Oh yep. boy. Um, what about tent and awning setups? Uh, let's, let's talk about tent setups. How do you, how do you stay warm in your tent when, when it's cold? So this last weekend, um, I sleep in, when it's just me, I sleep in a 30 degree sleeping bag. And then I have uh, like a fleece uh, blanket that I put over that. But, uh, and when I'm in the sleeping bag, I'm good. I mean, I, yeah. I stayed plenty warm in there, but it's the transition getting in the tent, you know, yeah. and getting changed out of my coat and you know, pants or whatever. Uh, there's Matt. Um, you know, then I use my, my buddy heater and I warm the space up in the tent. Okay. Where there. do you put your heater? So I'll put it on, um, you know, like a big cutting board or some sort of, you know, something, some hard flat surface, but it's basically right on the mattress. Okay. You're, are you worried about turning it over at all? Are you? No, I don't leave it on. I don't leave it on whenever I, so whenever I get in the there. Space and then turn it off. Yeah. And then, okay. and then when I get up in the morning, I do the same thing. I, when I first wake up, I'll reach over and turn the heat on and I'll just sit there and kind of watch it and watch it heat and do its thing. And I guess Mike cuddles up with his dog. That's how he yeah. stays warm. Um, Matt says the battery powered vest was great at camp last weekend. Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure battery powered vest. I'm gonna have to yeah. look into this. Yeah. Um, if, if Matt, if you're on here, tell us what kind it is so we can look it up. Uh, my wife is the number one person who hates to be cold. Um, now we, we just, uh, we just traded tents, so we don't have it anymore. But, um, if you're looking at a tent, um, the free spirit tents with the tri layer were, uh, it was unbelievable how warm that tent stayed, um, compared to the eye camper. Uh, it was, it was so much, so much warmer. And, uh, we have our first guest on the show tonight. We're going to back up a little bit, talk about clothes, but Matt, Matt McClellan, the birthday what's boy. Up? Hey, what's happening? Oh, just uh, got finished with dinner. Yeah. Joey, 
I know where we're gonna go eat next time. Where's that? Have y'all been to the to the Crab Kings? King Crab. King Crabs. Is that downtown? Okay. Yes. No, we haven't been there. Why you got it so flat? It is, is it? amazing. Really? That's awesome. The volume's all up. King well, Crabs. Um, I want to be I the know, first to. Uh, I want to be the first to wish you happy birthday on uh, the World Wide Web. Uh, well, thank since you. we're live. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, there we now, go. Arla was talking about your battery-powered clothes. Tell us about that. Well, it's just a vest. It's not. I don't have like a whole wardrobe. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Hold I don't on. have like battery-powered underwear. I, say, <laughs> I would That's be a, afraid of that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we need some Chick-fil-A sauce and some ranch. For Chick-fil-A. Are y'all in the drive-thru? <laughs> yeah, and he just heard you talking about battery-powered underwear. That's real awkward. <laughs> so so i'm guessing i'm Thank guessing you. here that y'all didn't get the kids anything from crab kings y'all are getting no. them chick-fil-a exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know cost, that. cost efficient there yeah so um, what, what kind of battery powered vest do you have matt tell it's us about uh, it it's heat do h-e-a-t-d-o-o heat do heat um, it's one you can get off amazon it runs off a little battery pack like you would use to you know recharge a cell phone or that sort of thing and it's got a little pocket in there for that and it's got little warming elements kind of like a, a heated blanket uh, it's got one in each pocket one going down the back and then one around your neck and it worked really well does it have a controller where you can turn it up and down uh -huh. yeah it's got a high medium and a low okay okay yeah it worked well, really well interesting. that was my first time to use it and it worked I wrote that down. My wife hates being cold. That may be a good Christmas present for her. So, uh, when I get home, I'll shoot you a link up from Amazon. Awesome. Appreciate that. A heat do. Heat do. Uh, heat vest. That's awesome. That's funny. This is the second week in a row that we've had Matt on the show while he's driving down the road. It um, is. It's like a thing. Oh, well, yeah, it, it is a thing. And we appreciate it. This is the second week up. in a row that you've uh, done it on Thursday, too. Is it? Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. Next Every week, time? we'll be back to Tuesday. So we'll Every time you again. do it on Thursday, I think, oh, crap, do I have a show tonight and I don't know about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kira, I love it. I love it. Well, I hope y'all have a great, great night um, celebrating your 50th. And uh, we appreciate you coming on. Halfway to 100. Woo woo. All right. All right. Be careful. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. See you. Right, see you. Bye. Yeah, bye. That's cool. A heat do. I'm going to have to look that heat up. Heat do. E D O O heated vest on Amazon. Um, that's that. That's a lot like what we have for a motorcycle. It's got microfibers inside of it that, that heat up and, um, and it has a controller. And let me tell you, they work. Um, when I worked at the prison, I rode mine, I rode my motorcycle 120 miles when it was 28 degrees and I never got cold. It was, uh, they work. They work really well. And wow. plus, I had all that wind coming around me. So, if you're just standing around, I can't imagine that. That would be. It. I would like to. I wish I had asked Matt. Um, and Matt, if you're still listening, um, how long does the battery power last? I wonder if did you test it out? Did you take any notes on that when you used it? I'd be interested in that because so, you know, he's the tester. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like I heard him say three or four hours when we were sitting around the campfire. Okay. But right. maybe that's, you can, that's not you can bad. clarify that's not that bad. several so hours on, on high. high. Okay. There you go. So if you don't have to have it on high, it probably lasts longer than that. Um, what do I do for my new tent? What do I do for heat in my new tent? Um, I have an annex, and I was just going to talk about that. Um, one of the things that we really wanted um, when we when we traded tents was uh, we wanted uh, to be able to put an annex on that would go to the ground and like. Like you said a while ago, Tony, I don't have trouble keeping warm in my tent. It's the in-between places. And if yeah. you have an annex on your tent, um, don't really uh, think that we would need one in the summer. But for the winter, it gives you that extra area down at the bottom where you have transition, where you can get dressed, where you can uh, get warm. And if you set a diesel heater or even a buddy heater on the ground right there at your, right there at your ladder, it will heat that whole place up nice. It just um, goes right we up were in there. Colorado two years ago, 
uh, in the in the eye camper, we we would put the annex on, and and uh, even Bruiser stayed on the ground down there because he loved it. Uh, we just had a little table. We set the buddy heater on, turned it on low, and 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 uh, we adjusted the temperature. If we got hot, we just opened the window, and if we got cold, we just shut the window. So um, we used the windows to adjust the temperature. Now we've got a diesel heater we can set down there with a a uh, wireless remote that we can turn up and turn down whenever we get hot and cold. So it'll be a um, little nicer, uh, but sitting at the bottom of that annex, that was the way to go. Now, in the iCamper, when, when we first started, I built a a corner table. Um, it was It's just a flat piece of wood in the triangle shape, and I ordered some um, some table legs that flipped down so we could store it flat, and when I picked it up, the table legs would go down and I could set it in a corner and it set it up off the mattress for a, uh, about two inches. Um, Connie and I are flip floppers. So we flip flop all night, flip flop, flip flop, mm-hmm. flip flop. So I was yep. always afraid that if we set that buddy heater in there, that it would turn over, melt the covers. Uh, we had a really nice X bed mattress in there. And if it burned a hole in that thing, I'd be really angry. Yep. Um, and so I made this table and it worked really, really well. Uh, in fact, I still have it uh, and can use it if I want to, even in this tent, because it'll fit any corner. Um, but with the annex, I think I've got a better option there. Yep. Um, and so it's it's that's how that's how we stay warm in our new tent. Um, Connie's almost home. Connie ran to Artemis today to get us some uh, walls for our um, our the rest of our walls. We didn't get all of our walls for our awning, which is another thing that I wanted to talk about because if you have zippered walls for an awning in one of the little um, propane fire places that we talked about, propane yeah. fire pits that we talked about earlier, that's huge. Yeah. Um, great story. It was about five years ago. Uh, there was about 15 of us that went up above birds. So we went to birds up in the Ozarks and then climbed even higher. Um, and it was December. We called it a Christmas camp. And um, it snowed, sleeted, and freezing rained on us the whole time we were there. But my buddy Kelly from uh, from Missouri had just bought a, a turtleback trailer. And he got the rhino rack with the zippered walls. Me and Scott were out here. We were freezing our tails off. Scott had about four Dutch ovens going. We had a fire going. Uh, I was making all this stuff and you know, Kelly has all these walls around the back of his turtle back. I walk in there. He's got a t-shirt and shorts on making, you know, Salisbury steaks and gravy and all. I was like, you know, he's got this little propane fire pit sitting there and here it is 28 degrees outside freezing rain. Everything is frozen and he's in there with t-shirt and shorts on. I said, this is not even fair. It's not even fair. And so yeah. that sold me. That sold me on that. It's uh, when you have a way to put walls around an awning, you've got uh, a whole nother way to stay warm. And the way that our setup is now, the walls on our awning will butt up to the side of our annex. So we will have a huge space that we will be able to keep warm when it's cold. So um, it's holds the heat in and. Holds the heat in and keeps the wind out. Yeah, sometimes true. sometimes just just blocking the wind can be a huge difference. Yeah, Travis says they use an electric blanket under us, and and that's that, I was going to bring that up uh, at another time too. But a lot of people don't think about putting the electric blanket underneath. They always put it on top. If you put it underneath, it will heat your sleeping bag uh, even better. So uh, sleeping so- bag. Uh, on that subject, I've got a question for Travis. Uh, how long does the, you know, what does he power it with? And how long does his power supply last? I'm That's a good question because I'm going to have to figure that out here pretty soon too. I don't know whether I'll need to plug the electric blanket into the Jackery 300 or the 1000. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, um, if it's a 110, it will draw quite a bit more than yeah. the 12 volts. And the problem with the 12 volt uh, heated blankets is, uh, almost all of them are throw blankets. They don't make queen size and king size in a 12 volt. And so you may have to get two, um, or you may have to snuggle and share, uh, yeah. because all of the queen size, king size electric blankets 
or one tens. Um, so Travis said, so far I've only camped in the cold at campground and we have had power at the site. Okay. okay so you can plug into the one tens. So that's, that would be a one ten. Um, we actually got, uh, the one that I ordered is an oversized 12 volt. So it is a, um, a cigarette lighter plug in, which will use a uh, less, uh, wattage and hopefully it will last longer, yeah. um, than, than the 110 will. But, uh, we're, we're definitely going to test that out and, and, and see where that, because that's kind of a big deal. Uh, if you can, if you can get an electric blanket, I think that is, that is really huge. Um, I, I don't like sleeping bags to begin with. They're very constrictive to me. I like to be able to move around and spread out. Um, and so if we can, um, so if we can zip our two sleeping bags together and make a double, we've got a queen size sleeping bag. And if we can have a thinner sleeping bag, with a heated blanket, I think that would be pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, said the walls are a game changer. That's true. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, um, a lot of the a lot of things that that we are talking about, a lot of the things that we're looking at, you can actually see them all in one place. And more Expo sponsors the show, and they have put out a sweet, sweet video check this out april 8th through the 10th 2022 i got it back here behind me because i believe in it so much and i'm going to be there with bells on check this out this is what more 22 is going to show It's going to be a great time, and I am looking forward to that. I can't. Imagine, I can't wait. Uh, what? Uh, and I know a few things because I work with Chris uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, so I know a few things he has planned. Um, I think moving it to April is going to be huge. Uh, the weather is going to be so much nicer. We won't have to worry about snowmageddon um, mm -hmm. happening again like it did this year, and a uh, lot more stuff is going to be outside. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, to go there. So make sure you put that on your calendar. Love to talk about more. Um, Kara said they're, they're taking the heater to Mexico next week. Glad y'all are able to get away, Kara, and, and go to Mexico. I think that's going to be awesome. And Matt said that they used their 12-volt blanket for the first time last weekend, and it was great. So um, I'm real excited about that. I appreciate that info because just buying one, um, you know, you validate my purchase. Uh you see, uh, I, I, I've been kind of following this this Bronco situation a little bit with the with Matt and Kara. Oh, I, I hate to sorry to jump around on you, but I was like, a what? You're not yeah. getting a Bronco? Kara wants a Bronco. Kara wants a Bronco. Yeah, but have you seen the comment yet? No, I haven't seen a comment yet. Oh, here it is. Trying to convince Matt into my next vehicle which isn't a bronco huh that was the subject of much discussion this weekend so it was yeah it was shown on the video uh oh uh oh we'll, we'll have to dive into that right we'll have to dive into that anyway. well let's talk about uh let's talk about warming devices what are you uh you you're a buddy heater guy 
Uh, I have been, yeah. But, uh, been you know, the um, moisture. They put off been, a lot of moisture. Uh, have been a staple uh, yeah. for everybody. Um, they, uh, it, I learned the hard way that they have a very sensitive oxygen sensor on them. Um, if you know, when I was out in Colorado, I was in my Oz tent, had all the windows shut, buddy heater on, and it would it would work for about five minutes, and then it went out, and it would not light to save my life. Where were you at? Twelve thousand feet, or I was at uh, where <laughs> is uh, about ninety five hundred feet, I guess nine thousand yeah. feet. Um, and so it's already a little low there was, anyway. I had to I had to open two windows to to get the buddy heater to work and after that yeah. i was fine but you yeah. know it makes no sense to me to turn a heater on uh, and that's open what my grandma did you know she turned the heat on open the front door i never understood that but if you're in a tent and you run a buddy heater uh you've got to know that those have very very sensitive oxygen sensors on them and another one that we have is the uh covea cupid heater uh this is a butane heater um uh -huh. that we, we got this from Aaron at Artemis. Uh, it's very small, very compact. It all fits in that case and uh, works very well. But what you have to know about these heaters is if you turn them over, they don't go off. Like a buddy heater, you knock it over, you knock it off, it, it goes out. It's got a, a sensor on it. These do not go off. I actually used this heater. I ran out of propane one time when we were... Um, camping and I actually turned it up where the heating element was facing up and I used it to boil water to make a mountain house meal because we ran out of propane and had no way to cook our food. Nice. Um, I actually sent that to to Covea and told them that that, that that actually worked and they said well you know we really don't recommend that but it is kind of <laughs> cool that you were able to do that. So oh, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, anyway, but we have since graduated to the diesel heater. Uh, what what do you did you get any spice? This is the diesel heater that I have. Is the one yeah, that you that's, have uh, similar to that? It's almost identical. I think it's red. Mine's um, red. Yeah, mine is red too. I mean, I I ended up getting basically the same style heater, but it, it what it boiled down to is which one I could get sooner. Right. Right. Well, they, they make, if you see the top left-hand uh, portion of the photo, they make a tall, skinny one. And, I think um, mine's I more really like didn't, that one. I really didn't like that design. I really like the low-profile design a little bit better. I like this design because everything is in, encapsulated in one um, unit. You don't have to put it together. You don't have to mount it inside of a box. It's already mounted. It has a wireless a remote, has everything with it. And for about one hundred and seventy nine dollars. You're ready. You're set yeah. to go. And so that's why I like that one. Yeah, I think Chad had asked about the diesel heater a while ago. So Chad, if yeah, that's you're that's still the one that we've got. Um, yeah. We can actually uh, post in the comments a link uh, later on um, to try to tell you which one that is. The, none of them have brand names. Uh, they're uh, they're all there. There's a million of them on Amazon. Uh, they're all different companies, but I mean, there's some, you, it's just weird. I, I don't yeah. know how they do it. Um, I'm guessing they're all made in the same factory anyway. So, and there's um, two basic versions. I mean, it's a five kilowatt and an eight kilowatt. And right. I, I keep hearing that the five is more than plenty more for than most. Enough. In fact, people teams. say if you can find a three, get a three because it's, you're heating. Oh, I didn't even know there was a three. Compact space uh, that you really don't need a lot to, uh, to heat those. So, um, the gas fire pits, we were talking about that earlier, uh, gas fire pits. Let me see. I don't know if I uploaded a photo of the one that I got. Uh, this is another diesel heater um, that I found. Um, I think this is made by Lolo Overland, which is out in Oregon or Washington, one of the, one of the two. Yeah. Um, now, they, they make these and put these in this case. Everything's in there, everything that you need, but significant price difference. These run almost $700, um, so it's a significant price difference in those and the other ones. And, I mean, um, it's, I don't know. So it's hard does it have its own power supply or something? Or No, it does not. No. Uh, oh, you wow. still have okay. to you still have to run it to an outside power source. So what they have done is they have just bought the kit on Amazon and they have prepackaged it for you in a nice, neat 
Um, that one might be a little bit more weather tight, maybe. Could be. You know, and that's one thing that you have to, you think about a uh, diesel heater is it does have an exhaust. Un unlike um, a buddy heater where you can put in there and you don't breathe uh, propane fumes or whatever, it does have an exhaust that you have to run outside. So if you, if you have to put it outside and the weather's bad, it's snowing or something like that, that's, that is something to consider. So depending on how hazardous the, the weather that you have um, could be what you do. Now the wood the wood fire pits um, bring a whole new element into it. Uh, we have several. Uh, we've got a collection of them, and I don't know why we have all these. Um, but the latest one that we have is the Madcon. We had this at Rendezvous. I love the Madcon. It's built built very well. And the thing that I love about it is it's so strong and sturdy that you could put a seven or eight pound Dutch oven on top of it, and it's going to hold it. Oh wow. Um, it's you can use it as a, a grill, a fire pit, or anything like that to keep warm. So uh, the Madcon and they fold up so small that they fit into an ammo box. Um, so they're really nice. We cooked wow. on one of those at at uh, at Rendezvous pretty much the whole time. We also have one of these. Now this is a big giant. It's made by Covea. Uh, very heavy duty. Uh, this is what I had at um, Big Iron. This is what we cooked all of our steaks on. Uh, the top parts you can take off and make into a fire pit. Um, works really well. It's big. It's heavy. Um, this is its little brother here. Um, it's smaller, made out of stainless steel. But if you put a Dutch oven on top of that, you're going to crush it. So yeah. it's it's uh, really lightweight and... Um, and uh, not really meant to hold that. Um, another thing that I have that I love, and if you don't know about this, all right, check this out. If you don't know about this contraption here, this thing is the bomb. This thing is a bomb, and I will put the professor stamp of approval on this. Check this out. Oh, boy. This is a folding charcoal starter that you can also use as a grill, Okay. So the handle folds over, the two sides fold in, it folds down flat. And then you have a grill in the bottom for the charcoal, and then you have a grill in the top to actually cook on if you want to cook on this. So this wow. is very small, very lightweight, very compact. Uh, you can get it on Amazon for about $26, $27 maybe. What? Um, super cool. All you got to do is look up folding charcoal starter charcoal chimney and it will be on there those are the bomb you can also put wood sticks in there and use it as a fire pit if you want so it's very multifunctional if you don't have a lot of room just throw it in somewhere and you'll always have a fire pit you'll always have a charcoal starter you'll always have a grill so it's pretty amazing huh <laughs> mind blown that just mind blows blown. my mind yeah i love it i love it yep <laughs> it, it actually um, kind of the shape of it actually kind of reminded me of something we haven't talked about but there's a have you seen the uh, uh it's a fire reflector uh i think it's made by mc ranch overland or something like that but it's a it's a reflector that reflects the heat back to you so if there's if you've got a fire going um have you, you you haven't seen one of those? I don't guess I've seen that. Um, so I first saw them on Epic Family Road Trip. They they use those like if it's just a couple of you sitting around a fire, you put that on the backside and it reflects all that heat that's going out the other side of your fire back to you. So yeah. anyway, that's never mind. Anyway, <laughs> Chad says just, I have a buddy heater, just never use it. Uh, with or in a tent now that that's um that's you know i have i'll have a little confession time here i have almost burned our, our camper to the ground i mean i have i have almost burned it to the ground with my wife in it um i i had that um Covea heater didn't have the butane bottle always all the way inserted and locked and it was leaking and i didn't know it i lit oh, wow. the heater and set it up in there to get the tent warm before we got up in there. Connie climbs up in there to get all the covers straight and everything, and it ignited 
all that gas that had separated and she screams my name and normally that's a good thing but this wasn't yeah. <laughs> um but she screams my name i come running and i guess she timed it perfectly because when i got to the bottom of the of the i camper ladder out comes the flaming uh heater almost got me right in the head um, and she did so good. She didn't, she didn't melt anything on there. Nothing was touched. Nothing was harmed. She got it out of there. Didn't even burn herself. I don't know how it happened. She didn't um, panic. Yeah. I mean, she just she didn't grabbed panic. it and threw it out. And, yeah. uh, fortunately that was, uh, she was up there and it was great. So it was, wow. uh, it, it was a time. So you got to watch that. I mean, when That's you're right. dealing with flames and gas in a confined area, you've got to be careful. Yeah. And so that was, you know, that was a little confession. So um, we've talked about how we use these things. To keep <laughs> Meow, warm. Mary. Uh, do what? Oh, I was reading Jared's comment. Am I going to paint the heater? Meow, Mary. So <laughs> that's his. That's his his term for the color of the gladiator. Snazberry. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. I don't know, Jared. You never know. Meow, Mary. I like Meow, Mary. Um. So you have uh, discovered uh, something from one of our friends, mutual friend, uh, about a different way of keeping his tent warm. And uh, tell me about the hot rocks. So uh, John was talking about it this weekend. Um, all of the rocks that were stacked up around the fire, he was, he was, it, it kind of started off as a joke, I think, but it, it, uh, he was thinking about taking one of the hot rocks at bedtime and putting it in his tent and letting that heat just radiate from the rock. Yeah. And I got to thinking, you know, that's snakes will do that. Snakes go and they'll lay out on right. warm rocks and stuff. And I, and so I, I looked at that, uh, I did a search for it and I found there's a few videos out there of people that have tested that theory. And one guy swears that he got his tent, it was in the 20s, and, and he got his tent up to like 80 degrees, uh, and he just took three rocks and he stacked them inside his tent. Now, the tent that he was using didn't have a floor in it, right? Okay. So he just he just that raked be, back. That would make a big difference. Yeah, he, he raked back the uh, uh, the anything that might combust you know if it got too hot and right. basically put it right on the dirt and uh, i've seen some other videos of of uh people trying that same thing so i think the trick would be you know isolating them if you wanted to put those in your annex right. or something something it, you know because that that heat would rise the same way right the trick is going to be to keep it from melting your annex floor Right. I think, yeah, you would have to have something like uh, this to put them yeah. in. Yeah. Uh, just some kind of a container, or even even this. Yeah. Um, you could put them in that. You just got to be very careful. Um, that you know, and John sleeps in a ground tent, so that mm -hmm. would make a big difference. Um, being able to put them in a rooftop tent, you would have to use the annex. I would not put a giant yeah, moldering rock up in my rooftop tent. That, that's um, right. I would roll over on top of it. And that would be the end of me. I mean, it yeah. would just be, that would be horrible. Um, but anyway, that's a anyway. kind of an extreme situation. And you're, if you're in dire need of some heat and you're looking at survival, that might be something to look, look at. Yeah, that's true. Also have to watch what kind of rocks some um, explode. Uh, oh yeah. True. That's right. That that's one true. that happened in one of those videos. Yep. Um, now another another thing that we had that we had thought of um, and have I've already talked about uh, heated mattress pad. Um, these actually have controls on them. They are 12 volt, and you could you can put them underneath your mattress to control. Now most of the tents, most of the rooftop tents, are either fiberglass or they're aluminum on the bottom. Not a very good conductor of um, you know keeping things warm. So. Um, yeah. you're going, it's always going to be cold if it's cold outside. So if you've got something between your mattress and that aluminum uh, bottom, uh, it's actually going to be a huge difference on you. Um, and so a heated mattress pad um, is one or a 12 volt heated blanket. This is a lot like the one that I just bought. Um, it's a uh, 12 volt, it's oversized and, um, 
and I think uh, you know if if it's real cold, you could have one of both. You could have one on the bottom. You could have one on the top. It just depends on what power source you're plugging it into and how long it'll last. Yeah, I may have to try that out. I've, I've got that that one that's coming. This a uh, seven hundred and forty-seven watt hour, something like that. That should so, be. That should so, be plenty. Yeah, it runs. Run, run a plenty. heated blanket. Yeah, a heated yeah. blanket. I think, or uh, even a even a heated mattress pad. Um, and if you can get one thin enough, it would probably be one that you could leave up in there and not have to take it out every single time or, or anything like that. But um, that's always something that I think about. But the hot rocks is what blew my mind. Um, yeah. You know, somebody uh, taking and, and I guess if you're sitting around the fire at night, um, of course, you've got to um, you've got to think about how am I going to pick this up? Uh, do you have welding gloves? Um, uh, or gigantic tongs that you could put something in. <laughs> so, so uh, this one, this one guy, he had, um, he, he took a series of little branches and kind of spread them out, and he was able to flip the rock over on these branches, and then he just folded these branches up around the rock, just like right. this. There's a series of like eight of them, and made a handle with them, and That's carried cool. them to his tent. Very cool. Um, I uploaded this picture. This is this is pretty much what our um, our awning with the annex is is. Uh, I mean, our awning with the tent walls is going to look like. Um, Taj Mahal. That, there's a roll up door in the middle, and so it completely encloses all the way around. Has screen uh, mesh doors that you can do that. But if you set if you set a um, a propane fire pit right there in the door or in one of the corners, you're you're going to have a really warm spot. Yeah. Um, or if you've got an annex uh, like this that comes off the bottom, do you still have your annex for yours? Yep. Yeah. Um, ours ours has a floor in it. Um, our eye camper annex does not have a floor in it, um, but it is massive. It's the biggest annex I've ever seen. Um, so you know, uh, putting a heater down there that has a, a PVC uh, plastic or, or uh, canvas floor, uh, you've got to make sure that you get that up off of it so it don't melt it but being yeah. able to put something in the bottom of that you can you can get some really good heat flowing up to the top it, yeah. it works really well and um you know the wife and i had talked um this week um ab about the eye camper um she wants she wants to get her setup going a lot like uh, arla's doing you know yeah uh, and and you have to you have to think in female terms can i set this up by myself is it going to be easy for me to do? Because if it's not easy for them to do, they're going to get frustrated and not want to go back. Yeah. And so with the eye camper annex, it has two poles and it's almost impossible to set up with one person. Um, and so she said, well, I can't set up the annex by myself. And so she said, how am I going to have a room uh, outside my tent to change privacy uh, keep warm, hang out in or whatever. Well, another thing that one of my good buddies has taught me is that um, gazelle and clam make these gazebos with walls. Um, you can take the walls off in the summer and it's just a mesh or you can keep the walls on. Um, you can open up the door and set a propane fire pit in there and it will keep you warm. You can hang out in there. Uh, you could set one of these, and Clam actually makes a small one. It's a six foot that is perfect to set right at the bottom of your ladder. These are very easy to set up. Uh, females can set up, take them down by themselves. It's not a big deal. It's not a big issue. You don't have to have an annex that attaches to your tent. Yeah. It can be a separate deal right at the bottom of the ladder. It gives you privacy. Uh, you can put a little potty in there um, and put your clothes in there to change. Um, put you a buddy heater in there and you're good to go. So uh, it's, it's a great alternative to having uh annex on a big bulky tent that a lot of people or maybe even a female can't set up. So uh, just, just blows my mind all the different things that came into play when we started thinking about winter and keeping it. I know. I know. It was, it was just mind boggling. And, and, and I started, you know, typing out the show notes and looking up pictures and, and it just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. I thought, man, this is going to be a five hour show. Yeah. It was, it was gracious. 
But you know, it's one thing that people want to know because like I said, winter's coming. It's, it's, it's a season that comes every single year. And so are you going to be prepared? Do you have the right gear? Um, and every year, what we have in the gear that we have has changed. Yeah. And so having to learn, we're having to learn to do it all over again. And so next weekend, when we go out, we put the annex on the tent. Um, you know, we put the walls on the, on the, on the awning. It's going to be a whole new, uh, whole new thing for us because right. we've, we've never had it before. And it's, it's a constant learning process. So, um, when you, when you go, when you take your December trip, I know you're going out to New Mexico. Are you going to, are you going to take the time to put your annex on? Or are you just going to stick a heater up in the tent with you? If you're moving every single day, that's a big deal. That is because a big if you're deal. And that's, it up, packing it up, that's a big deal. If you're set up as a base camp, like we do with our trailer, that's completely different. If I move, I, I usually don't like to put the annex up because the the cover over the tent i've got to remove it i've got to slide it out of the track That's and the then the annex is. has got to slide in so i it really what it boils down to for me is if arla and mckenna go then you know the setup and the gear that i take will change if it's just me i'll probably just throw up the shower tent you know for for outside i wouldn't put the annex up and I would just deal with a sleeping bag and depending on how cold it is, uh, whether or not I would get out the diesel heater or not, but yeah, I mean, just stick with the blanket yeah. and electric. Well, blanket. We're, we'll have the diesel heater, um, you know, with us, but, um, I always take that little Covea heater because it's so small. I can keep it in the vehicle at all times. So we always have heat. Yeah. Uh, I always like having a backup source of fuel. Um, I've ran out of fuel so many times, um, and I've got two 20-pound propane tanks on my trailer, and two summers ago in Colorado, we ran out. Um, wow. So people say, oh, man, you got you got propane for years. You've got so much propane on there. No, if you cook with it and heat with it the whole time you're there, you're going to use it, and, and, you know, it'll run out. So I like having a backup source. Uh, so if we have a diesel heater in the and the Kobea here, I think will be just right. Plus, you know, we'll have the heated blankets and all that. For those that may not know, in in uh, the URA area, there's no place to rent a propane tank or have one filled. You can only exchange, and that's if no, they no. There, well, I didn't even run. I didn't even find a place that it could exchange. We did I ours would. in Silverton at that little gas station that's right there at the bottom of the hill. They had us exchange, and that's where I exchanged mine. Well, we yeah, we didn't look at Silverton, but we we did we did we ran out, and we were looking in Ure, and I had to buy those little green cylinders. I bought everything I could find at that little hardware store, and they were ten dollars a bottle. Goodness gracious! Yeah. Oh man. Well, hey, uh, Jonathan Muncy's on here from Long Creek Overland. Hey, hey man, buddy. I've been showing off your product there, bro. Yeah. Got my shirt in. Got my shirt in. Don't bro me if you don't know me. Available at Long Creek Overland. I appreciate you getting that to me. I got it on right now. I'll be wearing it all over the place. I'll wear this sucker out. I'll have to be buying some more. Um, but, man, that's awesome. But, oh, man, staying warm. Speaking of staying warm, I got to get one of these. Uh, don't Hoodie. roll me if you don't know me. H hoodies, hoodies now available yes. at Long Creek Overland. Oh man, staying warm. Gosh, that was a lot to talk about. Yeah, did we cover it all? I think oh, so. Oh, probably not. I'm what about the pop up? We talked about all of it. What about the pop up fire pits? The pop up fire pit. Yes, you have the pop up fire pit, and we have. Boop, 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 boop. Um, right there. Our it's listeners have, have seen yeah, that. Your but... mic was muted. I tried to unmute your mic so you could talk about it when the video was playing, but uh. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, but anytime we play a video, it mutes our mic. So the pop-up so fire pit. Tell me about the pop-up fire pit. I see a lot of these everywhere. I don't have one, but. Yeah, so it folds up. Uh, it folds up. It's about the size of one of the smaller uh, bag chairs. 
Okay. You know, when you fold it up, you, you, when you take it out and zip the bag, you take it out and it's got four, they're just, uh, aluminum angles basically that go around the sides. Mm -hmm. And then there's a stainless steel mesh right. floor. Right. And, um, you set it up and I guess one of the, one of the big things about it is it cools off in about 45 seconds. When you're done with the fire, if you dump the coals or whatever, and let it sit for 45 seconds or, you know, a minute, minute and a half or so, it is completely cooled off and you can, you can put it away. That um, is, that's incredible. I like that. But the, the other thing too, that John and I found out about is, you know, if, how many times have you been sitting by a fire and, and the smoke, the smoke yeah. comes at you, you know, and you yeah. move to the other side yeah. or, or if you've set up and you've had the smoke going towards your tent, yeah. Have you ever had that yeah. problem? Yeah. Well, with this, we just pick it up and move it right? while it's burning. Huh. And then we don't have to, we can change, you know, so the smoke wasn't, wasn't an issue then. Yeah. Anyway, he says uh, the thing. bottom needs to be heavy steel. Looks like you can melt the bottom out. And, and Keith, it's, I got to tell it's you, stainless. it's stainless. And I've, 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 I've camped with guys who have used theirs a hundred times and it's still going. It's, yeah. it's really unbelievable. It looks like chain mail, but it's stainless steel and it's very heavy duty, but they're very lightweight as well. And they fall yeah. up real small. That's why a lot of people like them. Um, yeah. I, I was surprised. It's, it's lasted through some pretty hot fires. Uh, one of the other ones that I, that I downloaded and, and I don't have one of these, but I think they're so cool is the bio lights. Um, the bio light is so cool. You're supposed to get no smoke out of the bio lights you can cook with it and it also makes electricity so you can charge your phone with it while you're uh, you're heating everything so it's neat. makes electricity it's got like a blower account. on it uh, uh they're they're really neat and they're not very expensive they they fold up semi-small it's kind of bulky for me that's probably yeah. why i don't have one uh but the bio light makes pretty good products but that was one of the ones that i thought of that's completely different than all the rest of them because it they're actually makes... creating energy uh out of your fire which i That's thought right. was pretty cool that yeah. is cool yeah it's almost like what you talking about what you talking about what you what you, what you talking about <laughs> it just don't make no sense yeah, right. no you know it's just one of those things well hey man we talked about a lot yeah we talked about show. a lot staying warm i'm, I'm warm stuff. right now i need to turn the fan on <laughs> That's um, right. I think it I think it was good information. It was good for me uh, researching and getting out there and seeing all the different ways that you could that you could stay warm because it's coming. Uh, there's there's no doubt about it. And and I personally want to be prepared um, for the winter so that the winter does not keep me home. Right. Um, I don't I don't want to be controlled by the weather like like, you know, they were they were spreading around that rendezvous was going to be canceled because of rain. Um, you know, it's, this is, this is what we do. Right. Um, we, we get outside. It's like the mailman. There's, there's always weather. There's always going to be weather. Sometimes it's going to be good. Sometimes it's not going to be good, but be prepared and deal with it. And that's what we were trying to do tonight was to give you some options, uh, and show you what the options are out there for being prepared to go out in the winter. That's what right. Well, hopefully it was useful. Hopefully it was useful. Well, anyway, cool. I appreciate everybody being here. I know there's a thousand places that you could be, but you chose to watch this, and I don't understand why half the time. <laughs> but, Tony, my co-host, I appreciate you being here. You're, Thank you, uh, bro. You are like you're like my spirit animal. Um, you, you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place and just going crazy over here and you're just always calm cool and collected and and you know it's it, it's great to have you here i just want well to i appreciate that thank you thank you well, it's good to be here i hope everybody has a wonderful week i hope you get out there and use your time wisely don't waste it this this time that we have is running out so get out there and enjoy yourself live life to the fullest watch out for number one and don't step at number two Thanks, you guys.
Thank you for watching. Professor. 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 Professor and friends. Sponsored by U.S. Action Tracks, Hudson Solar, More Expo, Big Iron Overland Rally, Blue Cell Coffee Roasters, Long Creek Overland Apparel, and our good friends at Artemis Overland Hardware. Thank you for watching our show.